that you grant us singleness of eyes that our gaze will be upon you continually that our hearts will seek to finish that allotment that you have assigned unto us as individuals and as a company let your hand be strong upon us as we bear witness of you now and for our lifetime in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So I got a message from a lady today. And she came up with a solemn request. But I should remember that my message on altars is not yet complete. And that uh, I've not yet spoken about how to set up an altar on a business platform as an insurance policy to guarantee that the hand of God will be upon our endeavors, that he will cause it to prosper. So we'll just take um, 15 minutes and respond to her. Then we'll go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, which is the text that we'll be looking at under the topic, Surviving the Hard Times. 2 Samuel chapter 6, beginning from verse 7 to verse 11. 2 Samuel chapter 6, beginning from verse 7 to verse number 11. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzziah. And God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark. And David was displeased because God had made a breach upon Uzziah. And he called the name of the place Perez, Perez Uzzah. To this day, and David was afraid for the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed. Edom the Gittite, and the ark of the Lord continued at the house of Obed Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his household. And it was told the king, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that pertinent unto him. Why is that? Because of the act of God. So don't forget the issue of the divine order. So an entire nation was in violation of the divine order and the act that was supposed to bring blessing on the house of God became an object of slaughter because the divine order was not acknowledged. And it looks to me like after Uzzah died, they were looking for someone to die. 
They checked Mary. They said, no, if Mary dies, there's a problem. They check, check Timothy. They said, no, Timothy cannot die. They decided that it was Obed Edom that was good to die. It was the last, the last feat that the ark of God bore brought death upon a man that was trying to stabilize it. At that point, everyone was afraid of what the ark could do. The mystery that surrounded the ark was more mysterious. It was in this condition that the ark was domiciled in the house of Obed Edom. Are you there? All right, so what this man did was that he found a way to appease the one whose presence was captured in the ark. He found a way to do the things that the priest did not do during the procession. He found a way to offer sacrifices to the presence of the ark, the presence of God that was associated with the ark because the ark was a symbol of God's presence. God has decided that he will walk through the ark. So he made the ark an altar in his household, attending to it. He made the ark an altar among his workers. Then the spiritual dimension of the ark began to find expression. And this was the testimony And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obededon and all that pertained to him because of the ark of God. Because of the ark of God. He brought the ark of God into his premises. And he began to do some things that the other people did not do. And the moment God was pleased, the impact of the presence of the ark was felt on everything that was done. If they go to the farm, you will see the impact of their alignment with the person behind the ark in their family. If they want to rear chickens, you will see the impact of their alignment with the ark in the poultry farm. If they wanted to do business, you will see the impact of the alignment with the ark in whatsoever thing they lay their hands upon to do. So we want to find out how do you set up an, the ark of God, an altar in your own estate so that as you prosper with the altar in attending to the altar deliberately you will find a commensurate effect on the things that your the works of your hand does um those of you from the chief culture you must have i think this should not be so strange to you because there's a counterfeit of this matter that i'm speaking about that is in your culture Where's Chief Donatus? Arm yourself with the microphone and give us an account of how do they call that thing again? That altar. In Bovingo. And when it is many, what what? Ambora Vungu. Ambora. That's the plural form. Okay. Now, for those of you watching from America, from uh, uh, England, um, please be patient with us. The word in our dialect that is used to depict this special kind of altar that has the capacity to produce demonic wealth, there is no English counterpart of that word. So please bear with us. 
Chief Donatus, can you call that word again? Indovingo. And that is one, that's singular. So that's the word. There is no English counterpart. We, even Collins Dictionary did not anticipate this matter. So they did not make provision for it in the English language. So we need to make reference to it according to the language in the dialect that had the stature to carry the meaning of the matter that we are raising here. So please bear with us. I will try as much as possible to interpret where there is grace. But sometimes there is nothing to interpret to. So we have to retain the native presentation. Okay. So, um, Chief Donatus. Yes, sir. Can you give us an idea of how that thing works? Because it's in the heart of the thief culture. It's a tool that is used, embellished with demonic power, and it is said to have the ability to make a man prosper. So, and uh, I've heard once ag and again, people fight over it. People fight in a certain family to be in custody of that material because of the potentials that it has in making its custodian exceptionally wealthy. And so, can you give us, com come on stage so that they'll be seeing your face because... Give us an account and I will ask you a few questions. The issue of altars is not so far removed from our context. It's just that the people that have operated in the kingdom of darkness have utilized these concepts much more than we in the kingdom of God. So sometimes we will need to show us the example of that matter in the other kingdom and how it is practiced just to give us some form of enlightenment. And then we'll come to the real altar, which is the altar of God. Everything that Satan is doing and everything he does is a counterfeit. It's a counterfeit. He saw it done somewhere and he decided to transport and to import that technology into his kingdom. And he's using perverted principles, attempting to achieve the same results in his kingdom. Now, so can you give us an idea of this, how this thing works? Okay? Yes, sir. Well, the Vungu is a spiritual thing. The deep people believe that is the God of prosperity. Now, the way so, the ark they, no, was the way you are to the speaking is too fast. It's too fast. And um, an Englishman, a native Englishman, there are many Englishmen that listen to us. Yes, sir. The, a native Englishman may not be able to comprehend. It was when I started preaching to English people that I realized that eh, it's another language we are speaking or not. <laughs> so that's when I started dragging some words I speak because that's the only way I could get the attention of the Englishman. So the way you are speaking now, you are speaking to English tea people. Yeah. But what we want now is to address English people. So first of first. And foremost, be slow. Okay, sir. All right. The deep people believe that Mbuvungu. Yes, that thing he called. I'm running commentaries just so that you follow yes, sir. in the discourse. That name he mentioned is the name of the altar. And there is no English representation for it. Collins and Webster did not anticipate that there was a technology like that, so they did not make provisions in the dictionary for this, the name of this altar, okay? It's, it's called the God of Prosperity. Prosperity. The way the ark was to Israel, they believe that is how Mbubiungu is to them. To them, okay. The way the ark came to the house of Badidon and was blessed, okay. they believe that this is how if an individual or a group or family holds it, Blessing will be we'll to come to in their custody. And I, now, wait, okay. wait, wait. This thing, I don't know, is it a physical thing? Only he fell from hell, fell from the kingdom of darkness. Satan came and made it, transformed it from being a spiritual thing into a physical thing and gave out. What, what, what is it like? It's a spiritual reality that's been trapped in something physical. Okay, so sometimes, okay. 
the people we are teaching, people we are educating, don't have an idea whatsoever of this, these issues, these terminologies. We will need to be patient. Now, if you see the rain of questions on my Facebook inbox, the rain of questions, it will take us maybe our lifetime to handle all the questions that have come. It's, it's like a, it's a new area of, of, of truth that we are trying to establish so that people, the sons and daughters of God, can become very efficient in this new area of truth. So we need to be. So he said it is a spiritual reality, but it is trapped in a physical thing. Now, um, those of you that are watching online, you may have heard of an idol before, an idol. An idol can be made of wood. An idol can be made of mud. Some idols are made of stone, depending on the prescription of the spirit being that is giving you insight into what is required in order to trap its dimensions down. Are you there? Okay. Now, um, um, I want to show you how it looks like. Can you transmit this picture to... Where is Philip? Okay. Transmit the picture to uh, Pastor Dan, and Pastor Dan is going to transmit it to the media people, and they will give us a picture of the kind of thing he is talking about. Please be patient with us. I know you are aware of these things, but I just realized when I checked the number of people that view our meetings, <laughs> it's so much. So we need to be giving attention to the people that are online. And most time, when we carry on with our, in our own way, we don't really reach them out there. All right, so once upon a time, I was in the city of Zaria ministering, and I met this young man, and the young man came for counseling. And he told me where he's from, a certain state in Nigeria, and he told me that he was in a very remote area. And uh, he was going to fetch water from the stream. I know those of you in the United Kingdom don't know what a stream is. It's a small body of water that flows, all right? And that's where our villages drink from. There's no pipe bomb water. There's no borehole systems. They drink directly from the open stream. <laughs> you must have discovered why we are very healthy. It's because we've been exposed to all kinds of germs, and the germs are now at home with our body. Okay? So, because the other day, my friend came from the United States to Ghana, and he could not drink bottled water. That the bottled water was reacting with his stomach. That there was only one type of bottled water in Ghana he could drink. That's the Voltic, Voltic bottled water. That was the only type of bottled water. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to comment on that, but I'm just telling you that God has blessed us, okay? So this guy went to the stream to fetch water, and then a spirit <coughs> leaped out of the stream and suspended in the air and told him that, you see, we've been looking for you. We want to give you wisdom. Are you interested in our wisdom? I said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested. So they now gave him three alligator pepper to eat. And the reason why they gave him alligator pepper, sorry, those of you online, you may not know, there's one type of pepper that you don't find in the stores in the United Kingdom, in London. You don't find them in Cardiff. You don't find them in New York. You find them in Wuruku. <laughs> so the next time when you show up for IEC, ask someone to get you a sample of alligator pepper. It's a strange kind of pepper. It's, I mean, why don't try it out? <laughs> the, the Lord gives you understand. So... They gave the guy alligator pepper to eat. And the reason why they gave him the pepper to eat was because he was in the flesh. They wanted him to, 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 to ascend. It's just like, you know, they need him high. So, and the pepper could do that as fast as possible. You can also achieve that with taking alcohol. You, you can ascend into the frequencies of darkness. Those songs that people that are drunk sing, they're actually hearing it. 
Eh? <laughs> the guys are actually hearing those songs. So it's not as if they're just singing out of nowhere. No, somebody is dictating a tune. Why you are my the song may not have any relationship with the treble or the bass clef, but the song exists and it's being dictated to them and they are finding, uh, finding expression in the midst of that song. So uh, they gave him the pepper and they, he, he went high in the spirit. So they began to dictate to him how to set up a shrine. And the technology they gave him is the kind of technology that mirrors the dimension, the realm in which those spirits are found in the spirit realm. So when you can mirror that dimension in the natural realm, you can actually trap those spirits into that place where the shrine is. So when Chief said, the thing is a spiritual reality and they found the technology to trap it in a physical material. Now, so when you see an idol, are you there? The spirit is not always in that idol 24 hours a day. The spirit only comes into that idol. That idol is the technology I'm talking about. And it's built to capture the dimension that the spirit operates. So the spirit can be trapped in it. Okay? So when they do incantations and do enchantments, the enchantments mean to give instruction to demons. So when they do enchantments, the demons now are trapped in those vessels, those vessels that are designed to contain them. Are you there? I know it's on the screen. Just walk with me for now. Okay? So, so those, those things, they are, depending on the spirit, the vessels that can trap them are different. Um, most of you don't know the dwarf spirits. Most of you don't know that. You don't know the lexicon of spirits. And today is not the day for that. But there are containers that are used to trap dwarf spirits. Uh, dwarf spirits are the most vicious me messenger spirits. And most of the people, unfortunately, in Africa, most of the people that go into politics use the services of these spirits. When we, when we come to talk about the lexicon of spirits, at least the ones I have seen, in deliverance, in territorial warfare. There are not too many, but I've seen a few. And uh, the ones that operate here in this land, yes, I've seen a few of them. And the Lord has taught me what we need to do to disarm them. In fact, some of the breakthroughs we have had as a ministry is because of the fact that we disarmed so many of such spirits that have been released to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. But today is not the day. Okay, so what we are saying is that you can trap those realities within a physical context so that there can be interaction, there can be exchange, and there can be transaction. Is that clear? So if you are watching us now from anywhere in the world, this is the physical object that that reality can be trapped in. Meanwhile, Chief, what is this thing? Because it's this one now is physical. What is this thing? This, this physical thing? This one is, a, is, a, is an idol. It's an idol? Yes, sir. It's not that the picture is not white. It's an idol. It looks like this toy that baby is playing. It looks like a baby doll. A baby, do, baby doll, yeah. And there are many of them. It could be carved wooden image. Or sometimes they use this thigh bone. Okay, the, 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 the thigh bone. Okay. Um, of a human being. Of a human being. Yeah, so, so they, 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 they sacrifice. And they then will, the reality can come into that yes, bone. Yes, they will sacrifice somebody that has value. The All effect right, so, of... So, so listen, listen. They will sacrifice somebody that has value. Not just somebody walking around the streets. No, 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 just, no, no. Then they just catch the person and kill them. No, no, no. The person is promising. He has... A, bright destiny, they have seen that if they allow him be, he will turn out to be a great person. So they sacrifice that person, and then they use the blood, they pour it. And it's activated. They pour it on this idol. Thing. Yes, and, and it's then activated. the reality within it accepts that offering, then it is activated, 
And what will be the consequence? From that moment, okay. an ordinary person, I cannot see it. This one, the way we're seeing it is because the powers have been deactivated. That's now, why you can see it. All right. So the reason why we can see this one right here, right now, is because it's not yet been activated. The moment it becomes activated, it is invincible. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Oh, my. And now, so the next question I have for you, because I believe a thousand and one uh, uh, people in our audience will be asking the same question. How did they discover this technology? Because it's not in our physics textbooks, it's not in the chemistry textbooks. Uh, the two people believe that this came from a Tulok tradition. I don't know how true it is, but it's oh, a foreign It means board. that the so Tulok people are technology. more advanced yes. in this technology. Who is an Tulok man here? A Tulo? I don't know whether it's, that's true, ah. but I heard it came from. Ah. <laughs> Pastor Ephraim, what do you know about these things? Because they said they imported it from among your people. Um, so, those of you online, please stay with me. It is for most of you that studied in Cambridge and in, in Harvard, in Oxford. Um, you are not likely to believe what we are sharing right now, but you are a victim of it, even, even though you are. In fact, satanic power is more effective when you are absolutely ignorant of his presence and his potency. That's the easiest way to be a perpetual victim. Your life will be shaped by it, and you'll be unaware, and you're the life of your children, and it keeps going on, until someone that is knowledgeable in the way of priesthood arises and sets up an altar that has the capacity to contend with the altar of the devil. Now, so, uh, Pastor Ephraim, yes, sir. what do you know about, they said this thing came from a Tulu land. No, not really from the information I have from my father, okay. who is from the other generation. He, he told me that it came from the Crossivarian, mm. the, cross the people that the T called I'm down. seeing a lady from Crossover. Yes, She's already... Yes, yes. Mm. We got lady, it from stand the... up, lady. Okay. Yes, I know. The way you reacted, I know you are from Kosovo. So he told me it has been imported by the tea people from the Udam, which is Kosovo. But the Tulu people also got it from the tea people. Oh. <laughs> okay. yeah. It seems that every, every ethnic extraction yeah. is denying the source of this... <laughs> Sir, this thing you see here is not a small thing. This thing is not a small thing. This thing you see. Okay. Sister from Crossover, do you know anything about this? Which part of Crossover are you from? Do you know anything about this, this technology? Okay. The one I know is not really about prosperity. It doesn't, it's, it's not prosperous. Okay, it doesn't prosper people. No, but it's so why, What does it do? It's just giving to a family to be powerful. Like they are just powerful over every other person. Powerful in what sense? Powerful politically, powerful like, intellectually, powerful financially. Not financially, it's just you can, it shows you have power. You are not, see, the product of an altar is not, is not an illusion. When an altar is brought into a matter, there's, there are practical solutions that you see on the ground. It's not an illusion. When you say power, what are you talking about? Yeah. You, she's not so the, def the definition she's giving is this, because you'll be powerful. You'll be powerful. Yes. Politically, if you contest... There are, there I are know seven it, corridors it, of power. Yes. There's intellectual power. There's financial power. There's political power. There's spiritual power. Are you there? Me, I have spiritual power. Huh? And it goes on like that. Seven corridors of power. And what you are saying doesn't suit any this, of these This corridors. particular one, they are the ones that are made the chief of the community. Is that not political power? Okay. Political power. If you are the chief of the co community, do you need more money? You just come up with a policy and say, all of you, bring money. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what you're looking for. Okay, it, it depends, depends on what, what you're looking, looking for. Yes, okay. if you're looking for money, money will come. If you're looking for politics, okay, if okay, 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 yes, I understand what you're saying. Positions in politics. Power. 
Yes. Yes. Um, what's your name? Virginia. Virginia. All right. So you can turn in the microphone. So you were giving us a very deep. They believe. So the when it is believe. serviced, it disappears. It disappears. And uh, it only appears when it needs they want to kill. Want to? What do you mean by that? To kill. For instance, if they want to kill somebody and the person is not available. Okay. Or maybe the person who wants to kill is having some level of compassion for the for, for the, the person. Thing. Yes, they, they want to lure kill. you to come in. Maybe they'll send you go to so and so place, open so and so bag, and pick something there, and they bring for me. And as you get there, the thing will appear. Appear, and then it snaps you. Uh -uh. It snaps your picture. There's nothing. I, I only know of two people that escape that. That okay? Wait. wait. I mean, brethren. Wait. I'm wait. not talking about unbelievers. We're already confused. Red red. We're already confused. Just like Satan carries a Canon camera snapping people. Yes. <laughs> we, we have seen the original Canon. <laughs> yes, sir. So, so it takes your picture. Takes your picture. Oh, so that's when he begins to look for how to kill. They look for a way to kill you. Either ah. by accident. Sometimes some of the accidents that happen actually is not accident. They have already killed you already. And then... They were just uh, circumstances shoot. and situations. Just to state money, now something, and then they would call this accident. Translate and effect the thing that has already been accomplished in the realm of the spirit. Yes, sir. All right. So after this sacrifice, what are the symptoms that you begin to find? What is the effect of the sacrifice? What uh, what happens is that the sacrifice is yearly, either yearly, depending on the, the covenant. Is it that yearly or maybe after three months or four months, somebody will go down? And it's them, just the way you were teaching the other time, they are the one to choose who should be killed. You can't just go and kill a drunkard. And all. They prefer graduates in the midst of illiterates because that will add more credit if I graduate. I heard that the value of a graduate is like 10 people put together. Okay, the value of an intellectual, the so, value of a graduate is like 10 Novices put together. Put together, yes, sir. And once somebody is I killed, think at and, that point we need to say the Lord have made the Lord have mercy. Yes. Once the blood is poured and is activated, what happens is that they make a incantation that will choose one person from the family that will be very powerful. So the impact every other person, yes, the sir. impact of all of that ritual that is done will be channeled in the life to, of one person, and you'll be very prosperous. It now, happens now that's, just like the ark. In so, house. So, so, within so a short the, period of time. That's the aspect that I want us to really dig into. Yes, sir. How that man becomes prosperous. The spiritual power to empower him to prosper has been released. Yes, sir. Now, does he just sit at home and prosper? No, 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 no. He or must be doing something. He must be doing something. Even if his granite is selling. Even if his granite is selling, he will people. prosper and become big. Governors will be coming there to buy. Yes. I'm just trying to open your eyes to see when we say you have set up an altar. You cannot set up an altar. In fact, are you there? And do nothing and expect that something will come out of nothing. That's not how it works. And that's why the Bible says, whatsoever he lays his hands upon to do, it shall prosper. The spiritual dimension, the spiritual possibility the spiritual potential has been unleashed, but you will need to translate it into goodwill, into performance by laying your hands on something. So there is a work aspect. There's a work aspect. So, okay, does this thing expire? Um, it does it does, have a chef life? It does not. According to what I've been told is that... Uh, an individual does not own it. Okay. Even if you desire to prosper, you kill somebody, or you have an, a wooden image, you got a wooden image, and then you kill somebody and activate it. As soon as you activate it, it disappears, and it's a community that owes it. Ah. Community of witches, that's what the people call it. It's a community of witches. Even if you yes. go and buy it, bring it, and you say you want to run private practice. It might even disappear from your hand. And it appears, disappear from your hand and as soon as you activate in, it. In the community of witches. Yes. So they control it. They determine who holds it. 
And it's like this is where the democratic principles in Tiflan came from. This is what this thing they call Yanawangban. Eat up and wait, give your wait, brother. Wait, wait, wait. This is irritation. You are, you are talking to English men. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that dimension you went. <laughs> May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now listen. I'm tempted to talk about witchcraft, but I resist the temptation. Can you see that this type of empowerment is stirred, is controlled by the community of witches? There are many of you that cannot understand your warfare, and most times you want to fight your warfare alone. You are not capable. And that's the reason why we hold corporate services, is because your warfare began from a community of witches. It will take a community to contend with the community. And that's why in spiritual warfare in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, he says, we wrestle. I just spoke with a sister of ours. She went to study in the United Kingdom. And suddenly, this, this cycle of depression begins to hit her and all of that. And then she reports. I say, sister, there is a coven close to where you are schooling. And the sparrows are being casted on the entire community. I know you are keeping your own prayer watches, but it seems you pray alone. She said, yes. I said, you know, your own prayers and individual, as powerful as it is, cannot counteract a conclave of witches. The context must be the same. In the case of the administration of an altar, to shield you from the effect of another altar. If it was set up by an individual, then your own individual altar. Do you get that? And that's the reason why we come. You know, to come here for 40 days, I know, I know you are spending money for transport. There's a lot of that that is going underground. But uh, the collective benefit from gathering like this together and the spiritual power that we can muster on the strength of this corporate gathering makes it worth all the while. And there are many of us that have come here just for a good worship service, and you did not know that you were already the, you were the, the photographer, the spiritual photographer had snapped you. And there are many of them, and you can be a witness, that we have been able to pick out of the congregation and break that hold of satanic photography from. You must understand that there is something called a community of wishes. They influence the lives of people in territories, influence the lives of people in families, and it is always a corporate satanic effort. And that's why we need to also have a corporate divine community that we maintain a corporate altar. Now, so, so um, the, the person must do something. Yes, sir in order for the goodwill that has been generated to translate into finances, to translate into the greatness that uh, that community of witches are bestowed upon him. Now, my question is, does he pay any form of taxes or royalties to the community of witches that have picked him out of the pool of men and have decided to empower him? That one, maybe they're doing spiritual, is not something that I'm aware of, but I okay. know that <clears throat> and it's, it's rotational. It's rotational. So rotational. they can decide that uh, you've used it for seven years, uh, your time has expired, let us hand it over to someone else or another clan. Yes, and normally somebody must die. See, in order to activate Before, it for that clan, somebody yes. from that clan will die. To take and it from you, somebody must die. Oh, to and take it from place you, where they're will... taking it to, <laughs> somebody will die there too before all right, so you must have heard in the lecture, you must have heard in the lecture that the dialect that the spirit realm can understand is called what? Sacrifice. I Sacrifice. heard that where it's being kept, sometimes they dig the ground and put it there. Some are inside a tree. Some are kept, they carry it in their body. It's, it's being kept in different places. Like the one that my pastor went to pray for. Pastor was praying for uh, the man 
And then his eyes opened it. Look, it was the man that came to him and said that he has I have one. one. He has one. one. Okay. And the thing is killing people and now he has gotten born again. I doesn't know what to do. So the pastor prayed for him. He told the pastor that he's being kept, his own is being kept inside a mango tree. Okay. And so he prayed for him. And after the prayer, the power of God picked him and he was slain. And then the pastor told him that that mango tree would die as a sign that the powers of the Bovingo has been deactivated. And actually, that was what happened. So they have different places that where they, they kept them. It. But what I heard is that if it is kept under the ground, mm. that royalty thing that you talk about, there's a kind of money that they that come they... there occasionally to you know, drop. The I am lesser aware, denomination. I'm aware that you must pay royalty. Yes, this kind of money that they come there and drop. You know, and drop. And Where was it that we went to? I've forgotten the name of the city. Somewhere in Europe. And there's a fountain where people go to drop money. Uh, one of our friends, he took us there, um, Pastor Emmanuel. Uh, Philip, if you have the poster for Pastor Emmanuel, you put it on at the end of my service, my sermon. And so Pastor Emmanuel took me there, and people come there, and uh, they say it is said that if you two people are in love, they go there and throw coin and make covenant. If you see the number of coins that I met, <laughs> may the Lord help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you know that you went and did something, love covenant, you took blood, you say, raise your hand now. Now that we have come on this covenant, love co Okay, okay, so there's nobody. So there's no, all right. So, you know, this is the house of God. Don't hide. We may not come this way again for another three years. You, you did a love covenant with a lady. And you promise her that you, you two of you will marry. All right, so we'll pray for you and break that thing off your neck before the end of this meeting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. Yes. Any other final comments uh -huh. on this matter? Well, this is, as I said earlier on, some. They are in animals. They hide them in animals. No, no, no. Something like there's something they call Ayu. Ayu is is a controversial demon that is a mermaid actually. Ayu is mermaid. Is it mermaid? Manati. 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 Yes. Down here is fish. Up here is a woman. A human being. Let me say human being. Up here, human being. It's a fish. Down there, fish. Up here, human. Wait. I think we are saying different things. Is it? Are you talking about a mermaid? Yes. Is it real? It's real. If you go to zoo here, this uh, Benue State Zoo, you see the skin where the, the one that was killed, the skin. You see it. I, I saw it. They we are going me. there tomorrow. Okay, okay. sir. Can I throw some light on that? Please, all the light, all the light. Throw. <laughs> a mermaid is different from manatees. Okay, manatee. Okay. Okay. Manatees is a fish. All right. But it has this mystery about it that when you get the head, you okay. know it has some strands of hair. It has some strands of yes. hair, yeah, that's true. Once you get it and make a sacrifice, it will have the same effect like that. Um, oh, like this That thing. is what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, sir. So people catch that fish and they use the head. Yes. Once you go to a fisherman and they, you know they, they, they have caught this one, you will buy. But okay. once blood is offered uh, on it, okay. it becomes very potent Jesus. in attracting prosperity. Kabayo Mosi Yes, sir. Do you know that it's only when we get to heaven that we'll know, we'll understand many things. But let us have sufficient understanding to disarm Satan. 
why we are here. No wonder they killed that one in the zoo. Okay, yes, sir. Jesus Christ. Before we knew it, the one in the zoo. Because yes. when I was small, we used to go to the zoo to, to see the manatee. Yes. Then only for me to come back when I started schooling in the university here, <laughs> there was no more manatee there. It's dangerous, sir. It's dangerous. Because anybody can come there and steal it and use it for... All right. It's very dangerous. Right. Now, put your hands together for Chief Donatus. So the idea of the altar is to get and to be able to access the power that the spirit being has and to propel that power for good. Okay? To propel that power for good. Now the Bible says, you shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to make wealth. To make wealth. It means that Jehovah has, and meanwhile, the Bible also says that the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and it added no sorrow to it. The reason why it adds no sorrow is because the Holy Ghost is the original spirit that is designed to make us wealthy. See, if you, if you access a wrong spirit to make you wealthy, it may be able to make you wealthy, but it will add its own, its own, native, its own native signature will be added on your life. Are you there? If it's originally a spirit of barrenness, a fertility spirit, it will impart barrenness and bless you with barrenness in addition to what you sought from it. But the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord, it makes rich and it adds no sorrow. So the man that is into business, the man that is into politics, the man that is into ministry, the man that wants to ascend in his career, must know how to set up an altar in his business, set up an altar as the heart of his political endeavor, set up an altar in that area of endeavor in order to channel the power of God and to use the power of God as the driving force of that establishment. Now, so what happened to Obededon was that the ark was deposited in his compound for custody. They did not tell him how to relate with the ark. They did not tell him how to function with the ark. In fact, he was not educated. Everyone, everyone wanted to leave the scene of the death of Uza and go as far as possible. He did not have a choice in the matter. If not, he would have requested that the act should not be deposited in his compound. Now that it was a royal decree that was responsible for positioning the act in his compound, he now realized that, okay, I can as well benefit from it. So I, I told you that the dialect of, of, of priesthood, the dialect of that spirits can understand is the dialect of sacrifice. So I can imagine that this guy, Obed Edom, sacrificed to the ark. And he began to honor the presence of God. He began to honor the presence of God. And he was doing it regularly. And then the effect of what he was doing began to affect every aspect of everything that he did. Now, I have a friend in Abuja. And this, my friend, decided to start a fellowship in his office. He's the MD of his office. And his office is in a very business side of Abuja. It's in that... Uh, it's a business side. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, there are no residential buildings close to the area because it's fully a business uh, estate. So he set up a fellowship in his office. So no matter the business you want to bring to the office, forget about it. If it's a Friday, 
and it's um, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Forget about that business. In fact, he went as far as importing equipment from the U United States of America to make the worship experience very fluid. The sound is powerful. So anytime I find myself in Abuja on Friday morning, I hop into that place. And, and I, I tell him, I'm not coming here to preach, so don't even look at me. Because they do some, some very powerful prayers from that, you know, so I just soak myself. And he has some worshipers. I don't know where he got those, those people from. When they begin to sing, it's something else. So it is easy for me to inquire of the Lord. The things that I'm asking God about, it's easy for me to get a feedback under that atmosphere. So I cherish that fellowship so much anytime I'm in Abuja. So we hop into the place and I hide by one corner and I just enjoy the worship. I enjoy the prayers and I get answers for myself. All right, so, and that's all. I don't want to do anything. And I told him, I don't want to do anything. You know, I just, I just, I just enjoy. Then we now started noticing something. Because in that company, part of what they do is that they give out loans and then they re recover the loans with an interest, okay? Then this occultic woman now shows up. And he collected the loan without any intention to pay. And the reason for which he had the audacity to do that was because she was in league with several demonic altars that were very potent. So they went to court. And the lady has a relationship with the judges. And you know how terrible it can be. Do you know that that, my friend, was the only man that lady could not defeat? The altar they have been praying on, worshiping on in that office, the presence of the Lord that they revered on that, in the platform of that office, went to, I saw it with my eyes. Terrible woman. The presence of God that they've been acknowledging in that office arose, and I saw the hand of God in court. And this altar brought that woman down to nothing. Now, the kind of business, like, if, if, you, if you ask me, I will not do that kind of, that kind of business, if you ask me. But as, as terrible as the business looks from your perspective as an analyst, as an accountant, hey, they are making profits, they are surviving. Not because the idea of the business is tight. It's because it's an altar. The day he steps down from that place and says he's not, he's not running this business again, give that business three months. It will no longer exist. What is keeping it is the altar. So my question to you, businessman, businesswoman, my question to you, uh, if you, if you sell in the market, you have tr uh, trade, trade out outlets here and there, is, is there any time on that your platform that you shut down and attend to God. Our cousins on Friday, when it's time for prayer, it doesn't matter the business that you bring because all of their business outlets submit under the authority of the altar that they respond to. So that's the reason why sometimes they are very strong in business. It's because they have exalted the altar that they subscribe to higher, over, and above their business. But for a believer, it is difficult for him to have a routine that is going to exalt his altar much more than his business. Are you there? This, my friend, they bought equipment. You need to see, where is Smith? I think Smith, you have minister. Is Smith in this? You have ministered there before. So, 
that fellowship is so serious that they invite Smith to come on Friday. A very, very corporate environment to come and hold worship. And do you know because the environment is corporate, the kind of people that you see come there are not, <laughs> you find the kind of people that is in the shape of the environment. And sometimes the attendance is so much that they don't know where to put people. I told him, why are you still here? Move this thing to another location. And people are looking forward to Fridays. Do you know that that man decided that, okay, once a month, let them do night vigil in that office. And corporate people will come, do night vigil. They will stop it almost to the break of day. Some will sleep for one hour. And from there, go to work. Office. They put the name of the Lord on that office. And I've seen the way God has fought for that business. It is not natural. It is not natural. And I was challenged. I'm not a businessman, but <laughs> what I saw in that outlet provoked me to study the Bible. Because if they are doing this thing and it's working, it means it was in the Bible, but we didn't see it. Then I found out that that's the same thing that happened when the ark of God was brought into the estate of Obed-Edom. The Bible says that everything that pertained to him began to prosper. Are you there? Everything that pertained to him began to prosper. So once upon a time, I now realize that if I'm going to grow in the healing anointing, the prayer I pray, the one you pray for me, and all of that will not be enough. So there was a need to do something even more bold, more deliberate than what I can do, not Set up an altar. The Lord gave us an instruction on how to set up that altar. And the details of that altar, I cannot share it in public. The thing I noticed after we began to obey what God instructed is that I feel whenever I'm ministering, it has not come, but it will come if I pray some prayers. The hand of God do you know the experience of having the hand of God on your head? Do you know what I'm talking about? All right. So that is under that cloud I minister now. The hand of God is upon my head. If I decide some things are up to me now, not up to God again. If I decide that what I want now is I want to be knowing things about people and I want to know it for two hours, it will, it will happen. Because the hand of God, those days I will come with an anointing and minister, and the anointing will go down. Do you, you understand what I'm talking about? It will diminish as you are ministering, so you need to go and fill up. I no longer have those experiences. I'm plugged into heaven. What I'm talking about here is that we need to be more intentional. Somebody says he has a He's looking for a contract that is worth um, 57 billion naira. And he cannot set up an altar, a 24-hour altar, that will ensure that that contract passes. I know a man, are you still with me? I know a man that his name appeared in heaven. His name, not just only me. You know, like I said in, in, in prophecy, if it's prophecy, we have a conclave of the prophetic because every prophetic word must be judged. Right? It must be judged. So that's why we have a, a conclave of prophets. We sit on that table. And then I bring, this is what I saw. Number one. If I'm the only one that saw that thing I claimed I saw, canceled. Do you understand? 
Bring number two. Okay, somebody saw it. Somebody saw it. We'll tick number two. Because the Bible says concerning prophecy that let one person prophesy and let others judge. It means that if it's the belly of the Holy Ghost we are speaking from, I'm not going to have a private position that is not revealed to other people. Do you understand that? You are, you are not with me. The Bible is not capable of private interpretation. That's how prophecy is. It's not, you cannot be the only one that is seeing what you are seeing in the entire body of Christ. It's, it's, it's impossible. So I bring number three out, and there are other people that saw number three, so I mark it. So it's only these ones I've marked that I can speak publicly because they have been judged. Get that? Now, if you are going to be safe in the use of prophecy, this is how to be safe. Because prophecy has to be judged. And the people that are on the prophetic table carrying out this judgment have a very strong prophetic history. Do you understand that? When insights are coming, new insights, new revelation, new stuff like that, it, it, it is judged. So, more than one, two people on the prophetic table saw the name of a certain person appear. That that person will be the president of this country. And I have no doubt in my heart that it was true. Are you there? So people went and told the person. I was not among the people. He went and told the person. And the person did nothing about it. He did not set up an altar around that purpose of God. You know what? If you don't set up an altar around it, it is open for manipulation. I don't want to go into details because it's a sensitive matter. We cry today in Nigeria because that person did nothing. From the map that we have seen, we are not supposed to be in captivity at this time as a nation. But nothing was done. No altar was set up to drive that political agenda. When the sons of darkness saw that there was a gap, <laughs> they went and offered strange sacrifices. And even though once upon a time, the person of which I speak was the darling of Nigeria, they were able to move that favor in another direction. Nigeria is spiritual. And the purposes of God that lock in the nation can only be realized by spiritual people. So I am going to end at this point. Hallelujah. Okay, maybe, I don't know if it's God's will for us to stay here for today and maybe continue um, tomorrow on the subject of interest. But we weep today because a man refused to rise. The fact that it's captured in the purpose of God does not mean that our partnership in terms of priesthood is not required for the purpose of God to come to pass. Listen to me. God's purposes must come to pass. It is only God's men that can change. Now I know that purpose will yet come to pass, but it will no longer be through that man. If you know that you are dispensable, are you there? That purposes can still come to pass without you. If you know that you are dispensable, then you will become very intentional about your altar. Your altar is a sign that you are ready to fulfill destiny. If a 24-hour prayer watch for six months was set up, 
It doesn't matter which deity and which siren was sacrificed to. Yes, we'll see the efforts of their priesthood, but it will be insufficient to win the day. Please help me tell your neighbor, please don't attempt destiny. Finish. Finish destiny. Paul did not say that I attempted my calling. He did not say that I tried. He said, I've finished my course. Tell your neighbor again, the one on the other side, don't attempt destiny. Finish it. So eventually what the person did at the end of the day was that it was an attempt. He just attempted. He just attempted. And that window was manipulated again. Even though the time of our wilderness journey as a nation was measured in the balances and the end of it was decreed. We were turned again into the desert and now our borders are besieged. I found a scripture for us for the evening. No, let me keep it. Since we're already climbing to seven o'clock, can we take a moment and just pray? We'll take a moment. We'll, we'll continue tomorrow. And then we'll go into the subject of emphasis as prescribed by the caption above. Oh, we would have been basking in glory by now. The seasons of actualization as a nation would have been upon us. The true potential of the Igbo nation would have started speaking. The true potential of the Tiv nation. At this time, we should, have been, we should be taking mineral audit, mineral deposits audit. And how Foreign investments can come into our corridors to take advantage of the vast islands of, of mineral deposits. The God of heaven that created Nigeria never intended that any citizen of this country would be poor. And I speak just from my knowledge of our capacity and our potential from the perspective of the oil industry. He never intended that any poor man will walk this ground. But when you bring altars and the conclave of witches are the determinant factors, then princes will walk on foot and servants will ride on horseback. Can we say no to the abomination in the spirit? Maybe princes are walking on foot in your family. Maybe servants are riding on horseback using the blood of men to drink wine. You can come against it. You can come against it right now. He say, if my people that are called by my name who humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. It is only his people that can determine what will happen when the conclave of wizards determines what happens it is either God does not have a people or his people have refused to transact by their altars. If my people if my people if my people Oranto 
Isko brekete la sumanta la babonde ramina kusketa brende keri asamanta la babonde kabasila. Rai kope mina soke romanis romanis sali komba mahaila rakambe sosela la briaka bonsa nika santa babonde. La ice copila nemina lia ba 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 ya. If my people, God is saying, what, what, what exactly are my people saying? What are my people saying? Because it depends upon my people. It depends upon my people. It depends upon you. It depends upon me. Is there an idol in your family that has been activated? The conclave of witches, the conclave of wizards, they have activated it. And demons of darkness are coming to plunder that family. Death visits again and again. He said, if my people, if my people, if my people that are called by my name, Esso Sela Mina Gadiai, Robena Kansketomina Kadia, like Osemina Santa Babonze Elegeria, Rosketa Manseli Copanda La Babona Elia, Pante Sopinate, Brahasketon de Kendeli, Abramena Kuse Bandelia. Robe Mansanda, Robe Mansika Banda, Robe Mansakatalia, Ela Baba Boko Semalia, Pase Iko Santoria, Esca Branta Basica Branta Baboko Dale, Laiko Sepa Sebriata Babonde Catela, Abrama Santa Branta Baboka Bande, Aya Conse Ica Bramenala, Robe Nansantelia, Rakos keto pre, rakos kata bandeli, rakos semina itala, rako bandelia, boske tali, boske sansala, boske se lakabo, roke masaleta, abrai tango melaite, abrai tango melaite, shepinantendo kompelama, raka santeli abreka bonde, raka bosamena, aika bande kusila. If my people Rako Seminato Ekoskete Branta Babonde Yakabenda Babole Bakadia Eskabaranda Branta Baboske Lamena Sua Lamena Kande Lamena Sande Lamena Kone Bandolo Rama Santa Branta Babalaya Ekabasketa Branta Babola Kade Semena Kadia Branta Babala Kanda Raka banda baboni bakadi, raka banda basanda, raka banda babola talia, banda branda balataya, branda bakone balataya, ega banda la babogo basaya, ega branda bayada balata, aka banda babola bakadi, branda babola. Ea la babosa katalia, leto baskande branda babola kada, raka bendo kosketa mena kadia, branda baya. Rata baya, gata bonde gasame, abresko te blanda babola kadia, abahana babose, aleto ma, aleta kola, aleta kande ma, agaba kabala, ageto banda ma, agaba lata ma, aleto sele baya. Abresko te mante kabola bata, raka basanda baboria, el abroske te mena kadia, Eska branda basaka, eka balata branda babolata, aka banda babarata branda babolia. Hey, kabo bose te adia, kubrega bosa talala, raka banda babole bakasketa me, la iso sabe na kile, adua la boske, meratis, merakaba, abranda babosa. Abrakenda banda baboria, abrakenda banda baboria, 
When you set up any altar, remember, the altar becomes powerful the moment the supervising spirit of the altar comes and begins to give you instruction. There's nothing as powerful as following the instructions of your supervising spirit. In fact, the altar is not in force until feedback starts coming. You can say, for the next six months, all the profits that will be made from the business should be channeled here. Then he'll be waiting for you to obey. The one that tends to the priest must recognize the authority of his supervising spirit. If you are not ready to recognize his authority, you are not ready for priesthood. You, are still, you still want to be manipulated. You want your destiny to be controlled. We left that, that league. We left it long time ago. So I need to ask you a question. When last did God instruct you give this amount away? When last? When last? Your sacrifices in terms of prayer, fasting and all of that is to pull God close and then to make his own demand. You see, the sacrifices you're offering, you predetermined what you wanted to offer. But when your supervising spirit comes, he, he requests of you. He requests of you. There is no way you'll be on the same level with the tide of the meltdown, the tide of the inflation, if you are obeying the voice of your supervising spirit. Sometimes they will give you strange instructions. They can tell you, look for two widows, adopt one of their children, and see them through school. One, one each. As you are doing that, you just discover that the business will be working. That was the wisdom. And there is no way you can use your mathematical brain to come about the instructions that the, your supervising spirit would have given you. So what I'm saying to you tonight is this. If you are, if you are sincere in your heart and you start running that prayer using business time, Watch out. He will come and speak to you. He will come. He will show you what to do. When we come into the lecture tomorrow, I'm going to show you this principle in a more robust perspective. God is aware of the famine before it comes. And everyone in the Bible that contended with famine, there was a divine instruction that God gave. And each instruction was unique to the famine experience. Each instruction. And we pray today. I say, Lord, open my ears and reveal your strategy to me. Open my ears and reveal your strategy. Most times we don't stay long in prayer. We don't stay long. You are not desperate enough. There is a strategy. 
that God has for you. There is a strategy. There is a strategy. Open my ears. I need to know your strategy. Don't just sit down because if you sit down, this famine will deal with you. The famine will wreck you. There is a strategy. There is a strategy. He will reveal the secret to you. And if you are foolish enough to obey that secret, if you are foolish enough to obey that secret, the strategy, the strategy, as foolish as it is, will be the reason why the hand of God will rest upon you. There is a strategy. I love Osa Mahalata. Escopa Mahiso Sela Ele Bandeli. Lai Compresqueta Bonda Alabocotama. Raka Santa Baboqueta Lescopale. Jamenai Compende. Jamenai Comparata. Abrama Santa Branda Babolacata Balatalia. Ebramante Bragaba Sobria La Babonda. Ayabayata. Ayabayata. Yela ban toma, yela ban sobalata, yela ban samena, ay kombala sonta mala, abranta babose malia, abanta la babori maskanda, aye mamana, aye mamana santelia, abrapa santa, abrapa lata blanda babolata, aya mata la boko santa, aya masanda blanda babolata, aya masse katalia. I am a Santa La Baboria, Igaban de la Vina, Igabalanta Branda Babolata, I am a Santa Babori Bacadia, Semina Laico Paluata, Abacama Santa, Abres Copella. There is always a strategy. Romania Sica Batora, La Hasket Ombre, Cofela, Semina. Rande Casalabata, Endere Cosame, Endere Cosame, Braca Botala, Braca Basala Babone, Amacaito Combella, A Presco Balanto, A Presco Parabalate, A Presca Lebo Coria, A Brata Basso Penata, A Brata Balata Bababola, A Brata Basavia, A Brata Babolatua, A Brata Babolatua. Jemina itabala, abraka sala baboria, abraka basata, abraka balada babola balata, abrada basame nakati abrada babolata, isa kababora. In the name of Jesus. There is a strategy. There is a strategy. I went on a personal retreat to seek God for a strategy. What is your strategy for me? What is your strategy for me? And while I was on that retreat, the Lord came graciously. You know what he told me? He said, can you see this minister? Her husband was at the forefront of revival and he was cut off. So take care of her. When the Lord told me this today, tomorrow that same minister called me and said, see me there's nothing. So I say, as long as I'm still alive, you will never have the opportunity to say, there's nothing to you. So I started with the little I have. This thing, I have done it for years. So this thing I'm telling you, for years.
this minister I'm talking about called me and said, oh, I no longer have a phone. I use my own and it is gone. Somebody bought me a phone. Yeah? I think it was, how much? 1.7 million. I had not used it. At that time. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, at that time. Because that was when, it was before the roller coaster. So, it was 1.7 million at that time. And the reason why I didn't use it was because I had one that was not bad. So when she cried out, I took that phone. So she didn't know how much it was. So he now asked the person that went to deliver it, how much is this? Okay, this is 1.7. She, she started crying. That what have I seen in her life that I'm investing like this? It's not about what you have seen, no. Eh? It's about what? Supervise this child. Do you know that as long as I keep doing that thing, God keeps surprising me. 1.7 million is a small price to pay for what I've seen. It's a small price to pay. But you will labor in the wilderness without direction if your supervising spirit doesn't reveal your strategy. It, can, it may be a small thing in your sight, but it, be, it may be big in the eyes of God. And except you do it, nothing will move. Can we say pray again? Show me the strategy. Show me the strategy. Show me the strategy. Show me, somebody needs to call him. Show me the strategy. Show me the strategy. Show me the strategy. Show me the strategy. Kabola. <laughs> Ropandeli kosata mandalia. Romina sika brevo konda. Samakadeli. <laughs>